Well, you made it to the end. Hey, I just want to say that uh, if you made it to this part, I appreciate uh, you tuning into this uh, video. Uh, this was quite a fun project for me. It uh, took quite a bit of time and testing uh, to do this, but uh, uh, I enjoyed it and I hope that uh, <clears throat> this benefits you too. Uh, if you're uh, getting into porting and, and doing your own work, uh, especially if you don't have your own flow bench, and uh, hopefully I'll save you a little bit of time and uh, an effort and uh, get you uh, to the point to where you can make some pretty good results out of uh, your efforts. Um, real quick, um, I'm just going to go over a couple of areas that uh, uh, that I did a lot of work and or some areas that worked on and uh, I didn't find anything to be gained uh, in your in those other steps one through five. Those are the areas that you need to focus on um, and then you can decide on how much intent you want to do to because the reality is is uh, if you follow all those steps all the way through depending on your skill level uh, to do one of these intakes can take you anywhere from 9 to uh, 15 hours worth of work uh, it uh, especially if you get all the way in there and reworking the bull uh, it, it can be quite a bit of work so something to, to decide on and think about but you kind of now you know uh, what your efforts are and what you can expect out of it and what your gains going to be so you can kind of decide on uh, What you want to do with that? Uh, <clears throat> let's go uh, real quickly. I want to show you something <laughs> and This is kind of interesting uh, Some of you that probably didn't make it to this part of the video uh, Going through here this can actually save you a bit of time uh, and effort uh, I want to show you this is pretty important. This is something uh, I noticed and learned once I started to uh, do some flow work on the test bench. Um, it was interesting. The bowl, okay, inside here, I'm going to shine the light and I'll put some better pictures in there. Uh, a lot of there's a lot of work out there I've seen that uh, where guys really get in there and rework the bottom and they put a nice shiny finish like a car type polish on there, okay? Uh, and if you notice in there, see the discoloration? See, that's a, the lighting's pretty good there. See that green in there? That's actually epoxy. And I'm going to go into some detail on, on why there's some epoxy in there, all right? In my efforts <clears throat> to try to find the max, I mean, that was the whole project on this, is how I could gain, get the maximum out of this, you know? So step by step and step. So what I did is working the bottom of the bowl there, I actually, going into some of the inner ports, because those are the weaker ports, I tried to channel and groove those a little bit, try to drop a lip in there to help influence and uh, see if I could pick up some air movement. Well, what happened was in one of the ports, I actually got too aggressive in it and I thinned it down to the point to where I was going to have to add some epoxy in there because it was too weak and pretty much broke through. Well, in my effort of trying uh, the different techniques on some of the other ones as well, um, after all the work I did, and I spent hours of, uh, just manipulating and trying some stuff, and uh, I, what I found out is that everything that I did didn't didn't prove out to be anything. It, it, I didn't see any gains whatsoever on it, right? And to be honest with you, um, the down and dirty thing, you could pretty much go back in there, like I was showing in an earlier step. This 60 grit will knock down just about the, as much of the casting flash, leave it a little bit rough, and call it good because that bottom area basically what I've kind of come up with in conclusion is when the air moves to this guy out the carburetor it hits the bottom basically bounces back at an angle so it's kind of a bit of a dead space as far as it goes like I said the top of the port and the, the these long sides is where the air really likes to move through the intake so putting that extra fine detail and polish and all that business in there really is not it's just more of show it's not really a performance gain and like I said if you look at this area this is not the restriction point all right this is wide open the restriction is down in here so save yourself some grief and effort and uh, go in there and work these areas clean that area up there because it's pretty much wide open it's not that it's not the tight spot and uh, just to go back to the epoxy, um, 
after my efforts, I got pissed off and I just went back in there and I smoothed it all out with epoxy. Even though I had the one area that I had to put in, I would have it anyways. I used to, I used to, if you do have to use like an epoxy, and there are good ones out there. This is Good Sons. Uh, it's a two-part epoxy. It's pretty pliable. It gives you about 20 minutes to set up. Nice to work with. And also, uh, if you like Devcom, Putty A is another good one. And this is rated for 500 degrees. It doesn't shrink. Um, yeah, of course, there's guys that use like the JV welds out there and stuff like that. And you might, and there you hear the stories about some hillbilly that gets away with running, you know, 10 years, oh, but running in there. But if you do have to do epoxy, because there are builds, like two-stroke guys have been using epoxies to fill up ports and stuff like that. Or maybe other builds, if you're doing a true port match to the head, you might have to take up some gap. So don't be afraid not uh, to use epoxy. I mean, obviously, if you have aluminum in, you can weld and fill it back in. That's ultimately the best. But uh, there are some good epoxies out there. And uh, the, like I said, this is right at 500 degrees and it doesn't shrink and uh, it's pretty safe uh, if you, as long as you finish off the surface and, and uh, prep it well, it'll set up nicely for you. And it also works pretty well for grinding it and smoothing it out. Not so bad. Okay, um, I, I know the video's gone long. Like I said, there's a lot of material to cover, uh, but if you take the time, uh, this extra, you know, whatever this video, all the sections runs 30 minutes, you could probably have saved yourself hours worth of porting thinking that you're going to achieve areas which aren't going to give you any. Uh, I'm going to pull this other piece up here that I recently just finished off. And this is going back into the theory about polishing, okay? <clears throat> this is a little bit of proof to you, all right? Uh, that uh, the mirror finishes and all that business, uh, you know, it... Uh, it's not what it all uh, cracked, what it's said to be, you know. This intake right here, I'll show you, okay. I'm going to zoom into, this is basically the same one, okay. After I worked on uh, uh, this other intake and I applied all my principles, everything that I learned, I went into this guy. See this guy in here, the light kind of bounces off here, but... Let's see if we can get a, a, a better angle, but it's actually got like scratch marks in there. This is pretty much um, finished off with an 80 grit uh, sanding roll. And some of the areas in the ports coming up here, um, you know, my angle, the lighting is it's too difficult, but the runner actually in there is uh, nothing more than this carbide bit. And if you get pretty good with working your uh, porting and smooth, you can almost get a carbide finish, just leave it at that, and it's still smooth to the touch. And you don't really even need to go in there with the sandpaper. You could just do a little bit of cleanup with an 80 gram. All right, let's finish this, summarize this up. Just with this basic rougher finisher, right? Just to give you an example, um, this guy had flowed equal and a little bit better than this guy over here that I put the fine, I mean, if you looked inside here, I went all the way down here, I ended up finishing it with the cross buff all the way through. And this guy right here in the rougher configuration, actually some of the ports flowed five, five CFM higher, okay, uh, from what this guy did. So in just basically going in here with carbide bit and the 80 grit sandpaper, you can get the same flow numbers as even with this high polishing and this time I think uh, there's about 10 hours worth of work where uh, I did a lot of this stuff but you know the polishing and cross buffing and fine tuning and getting all those scratch marks that you see out there it takes a lot of time so something to think about uh, as far as that uh, you know people that get concerned about hey you know I really got to put that shiny finish on there well it's more psychological than it is really uh, as far as a performance game Okay, so that's it. Um, if you are not up to the task of porting yourself, you see this, wow, that's a bit of work. I do offer porting services, and uh, I would love the opportunity. If you are looking for somebody to port up your uh, intake, uh, feel free to contact me. Once again, my email is brent at blitzrre.com, and you can also get a hold of me on my phone. Number is 480-734-7921.
Uh, I will be putting out other uh, informational videos. Uh, the next one I'm working on is actually TPI. Uh, that's kind of how I got into a lot of porting uh, as far as car stuff goes. So please uh, tune in and thank you for your time and God bless.